we uh, have a tremendous challenge ahead of us this week with Troy. Uh, looking at them on film, I mean, they uh, Boise State is obviously one of the elite teams in the country, and they opened up with them and, and should have won the football game. They completely shut Boise's offense down, which that doesn't happen very often. Uh, so they're an excellent defensive football team. They've got great skill guys on the offensive side also. A uh, very balanced football team, can run, can throw. So that presents a whole new level of problems for our defense. And uh, I think they're probably you know, one of the more talented teams in the Sun Belt. A lot of people pick them. I know coaching-wise, thought that they'd be the team to beat in the uh, Sun Belt this year. And I, yeah, I'd say that's exactly right. Uh, tremendous football team. So. Again, we're going to have our work cut out for us. We're going to have to play at our very best to even be in this game. The last two years, it hasn't even been close. And uh, so we, we've got a lot of work to do this week and going to play a great game Saturday. Any questions? What has Coach Brown done well in his short time there? Well, I think recruiting, number one, you know, they've got, uh, you know, NFL prospects, running backs, receivers, uh, defensive backs, uh, some guys up front. I mean, they and they're in a hotbed for recruiting too. When you look at you know Alabama, South Georgia, Florida, they're in some great areas for that, and they've got a great tradition there of football that he's tapped into. And uh, you know, Neil's a really good offensive football coach. Um, Vic Koning is a defense coordinator. He's been a lot of places, and tremendous, tremendous staff he has there. So uh, they just do a great job of coaching. What um, what went wrong with the last couple of years, and then? Well, last year, the problem was turnovers for us offensively was turnovers in the red zone. Uh, I think we had over 500 yards of offense. We threw it for over 400 yards, and we were in the red zone all night. <clears throat> but we turned the ball over five times, and I think four of those were in the red zone going into score. And there's no way you're winning football games doing that. Um, we didn't run the ball exceptionally well last year against them. I think that was Larry's first game back. He wasn't quite healthy yet either. Uh, so we just, uh, you know, we just have not performed well against them on offense. Defensively, um, yeah, I think they really put us in some mismatches. We didn't hold up very well in the back end, uh, and they put a lot of stress on our defense. We gave up too many explosion plays to stay in the game. So I think in the past two years, it's really just been a talent issue more than anything, and uh, we've got to go and see if we've closed that gap uh, and see where we stand. Coach, how quickly did you put in perspective for your team uh, the win of the Lobos and then this upcoming game with Troy? Yeah, that's a great question, Tom, because it's that's an issue for us. Our guys haven't been in this situation a lot. You know, we we celebrated all the way back to Las Cruces. I can tell you that the buses were were alive on the way back. But uh, Sunday, you know, we we talked to the team that we have to flip flip the switch to Troy. And I understand everybody in town is going to be congratulating you guys, and and they should. Uh, but every time they do that, you guys have to start talking about Troy. And uh, we got to put that other one away. You know, we beat New Mexico last year, and we only won three games in the season. That's not what we're after. That's not the standard. Um, so I, I hope that our guys, and I think they will, understand what's ahead of us. We've got the toughest schedule in the Sun Belt Conference. We play all the top teams. I think we're the only team in the Sun Belt that plays all the top teams. So we've got a long road ahead of us, and we've got to get better as a football team if we want to recreate. What happened Saturday? Not to dwell on it, Coach, but tell us the, the looks in these players' eyes. You looked at them straight in the eyes after that win on Saturday. What was that look in their eyes that you're hoping can continue on? Yeah, season? you know, I think to tell you the <clears throat> the look that I saw a week in practice and before the game was they're playing with a chip on their shoulder. They're playing with an edge that we haven't had before. They're believing what we're talking to them about, and they, and they took some confidence out of the Arizona State game. I think that carried over to New Mexico and. Hopefully, you'll carry over a little bit more in, in this one. Um, you know, I would have loved to have won that game going away. But in a lot of respects, that might have been one of the best things that could happen to us because we went on the road and won, which we didn't do all last year. Uh, we went on the road and we won a close game, which that takes a lot of toughness, mental and physical toughness, to get done. And maybe that helped us clear a hurdle. You know, we'll see moving forward if that, that is true. But it. Uh, I think that can be a good building block for us. Anticipating a big, big crowd because of uh, the first home game, beating the Lobos, playing well against Arizona State. I, I certainly hope so. We need help. You know, we need support from this community and the university, and, and, and we've got loyal fans. We need more of them. Uh, so I hope everybody will come out. And you know, I think we put an exciting product on the field. I think our defense is fun to watch. I think our offense is fun to watch. These kids are playing their hearts out right now. 
And, uh, and we need a home field advantage. It's going to take everybody in this city to win this football game, plus our team. So I'd encourage everybody, please come out and support these kids. So if this gets rid of the wall facts, what kind of challenges does that present for your defense? You've done a good job against your quarterback, but if he gets rid of the wall, so Yeah, I mean, you've got to tighten the coverage up is what that tells you. You know, if you give him, if you blitz, but you're playing soft coverage, it's going to be a completion. And, and now you've got to make the tackle in open space. So. You got to be willing to get up there and compete. The DBs with the receivers, a little bit tighter coverage, um, and our guys up front. We've got to get there, and you don't necessarily have to get there to get the sack, but you got to get there and get your hands up. We got to knock some balls down at the line of scrimmage. You know, if he's getting it out quick, that means those are short throws also. So if our guys will get up there and get their hands up and jump and get in front of that ball, you know, hopefully we can tip some or knock some down. Are you more concerned about them running the ball because they have a good running back or silver? What do they do best, I yeah, I mean, I, I'm concerned about everything, <laughs> Jason, to be honest with you. It's, uh, they've got great backs, you know. So, um, number one is you will never win a game unless you can stop the run. Defensively, you're never going to play well unless you can stop the run. So, that's always first. Um, but, you know, we have concerns about the back end. You know, we've got to play better in the back end. We didn't play well in the fourth quarter in the, against the passing game in New Mexico. Um, you know, we had a couple of safeties out that I think we'll get back this week. Jaden Wright and Wonga, I think, will both be back. LaForce stepped up, played a great game for us, obviously. But, uh, you know, we've got to play a little bit tighter and a little bit better in the back end also. What did they do defensively? What did they do? You know, they're basically an eight-man front defense. I, I think what they do really well is they confuse quarterbacks. Uh, they show you a lot of different looks. Uh, they're not necessarily a blitzing team but they have a lot of people around the line of scrimmage and then they drop out into their coverages and they have a nice mix of coverage schemes uh, that are a little bit exotic. You know, they'll double certain receivers. Uh, uh, it's just, it's hard to get a pre-snap read for a quarterback of exactly what coverage they're in. They do a great job of disguising things. All right, uh, Danny, Ken, you got any questions? Uh, hey, Coach, what about the injuries? Any other injuries we should know about? No, we had uh, O.J. Clark, uh, they thought may, may have had a concussion during the game. I know he's going to be assessed again today. Uh, it turned out it might not be quite as bad as what they thought, uh, but I haven't gotten his status yet. He would be the only guy I think right now is questionable for us. Everybody else should be good to go. I think uh, Jaden Wright will be cleared this week. Wonga should be back this week. Um, Greg Hogan should be back this week. He didn't play at wide receiver at all in the New Mexico game, so I think we'll have him back also. So we're relatively healthy. Uh, waiting to hear on O.J. Clark. All right. If Clark can't go, if Clark can't go, who would go in this place? Uh, well, Isaiah Lottie, he and, uh, and O.J. split time anyway. So Isaiah would go uh, first. And then Anthony Muse is kind of our jack-of-all-trades wide receiver. He could play every position, and we'll slide him over into that slot uh, position for this game also.